Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Haley Legassi, and I am so glad to be here with all of you today for our very first event of this school year. I want to give you guys all a wave because I saw some people waving to me, so I want to wave back and say hello. How many of you have been to an event with us before, maybe last school year? Uh, I see a few of you. I see more teachers, but maybe you have a new teacher with new classmates this year. So that is cool. So today we are in for a treat. We are joined by two-time Juno nominated singer songwriter and author Gina Lena. And today she's going to share with us her book, The Mighty River. So today we are coming together from all across Canada. We have people from British Columbia, Alberta, and all the way across Canada through to all the provinces in the East as well. And I am so excited to be here. And I am coming from British Columbia. And there is a mighty river that flows right by where I live. So I live near Fort Langley. So Fort Langley, British Columbia, does anyone know what the mighty river that flows through most of BC and definitely past Fort Langley is? Put up your hand if you know what it is. Hmm, if you know, shout it out so we can hear you. I see a few people and here I've heard a few people who have said the Fraser River, so you are right. So today I am coming to you from about right there-ish from the Fraser River, but it is a mighty river that flows all the way from like the middle of our province all the way up. And so the because I am here in Fort Langley, that means I am living on the traditional territory of the Kwantlen and the Keitsi and the Matsui and the Semiamu First Nations who have relied on this mighty river and cared for the mighty river for thousands and thousands of years. So we are honored to be here um, today. And Gina Lena, is joining us today from Vancouver, which followed the mighty river down all the way to the end. And Gina is all the way down here in Vancouver. So I am so excited to be here with you today. Um, and in a moment, I'm gonna hand it over to Gina and she is gonna take it away. She's gonna give us her presentation and read a story for us and sing a song or two perhaps. And then at the end, you're gonna have some time for questions. So if you have a question for Gina, if you think of it during the meeting, you can get your teacher or your grown up or yourself to write it into the chat. Make sure that it comes to me um, rather than to Gina, because I'm going to look, let's look at them and I am going to see what all the questions are and bring them together. So make sure your questions come to me and we will have some time at the end. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Gina Lena. Hello everybody. Hello wherever you are from all the way in Canada. It is so nice to be here. My name is Gina Lena and Haley is right. I'm a singer songwriter and I'm also an author and I love to do all sorts of things with kids. And I'm just wondering how many of you are in kindergarten? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you are in grade one? Raise your hand. Okay, I've got a few there. What about a grade two? Raise your hand. What about grade three? What about grade four? What about grade five? What about grade six? What about grade seven? What about grade 198? No, 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 I see someone saying no. Oh, well, <clears throat> I've been in school a long time and I would be probably in grade 58 or something like that. I thought I'd just play the beginning of the, the chorus of the song that you just heard and it goes like this. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. try 
I just the part that goes, oh, way, oh. Can you do that? Oh, way, oh. Oh, way, oh. Ooh. It goes, save the mighty river. Save the mighty river. Save the mighty river. Save the mighty river. There is the chorus so that anytime you listen to that song, and if you want to celebrate World Rivers Day, you can be able to sing along to that. I'm going to put this guitar away because I think you're in for a story. Is that right? I can't wait to read you this story that I made with my friend Kelly Wills. And before I show you that, I'm going to stick a sticker on my head. Hmm. What sticker should I put on my, what sticker should I put on me? Should I put the cormorants? Or should I put the grouse? Or maybe the caribou? Oh, how about the crane, the crane? Uh, okay, the dragonfly? If you say dragonfly, raise your hand. Okay, a lot of dragonflies. Let me just see. If you say the loons, raise your hand. Okay, uh, if you say the little harvest mouse over there, then put your hand on your head. <laughs> okay, so you want me to put the harvest mouse sticker on me? Um, there? Is that good? Is that a good place? Okay. <clears throat> and you want me to put the loon? How about I put the loon right here? Is that a good place? Or maybe on my nose? My nose? Are you sure you want me to do this? I just put it on my nose right there. I'll, uh, they might um, <clears throat> fall off a little bit later on. And did we, oops. Oops, <laughs> okay. I think somebody said the dragonfly. So I'll put the dragonfly sticker right on my, uh, how about right under my cheek here? There we go. So I feel like I'm part of the river ecosystem. That nice? I've got all these stickers that I can choose from. And there we go. Okay, the dragonfly is going to fly off and this little harvest mouse is going to run over and run away. <laughs> okay, here is the book that I'm going to read. And I'm wondering how many of these animals do you know? I'm gonna show you the cover really close. So a really good look at them. And just in your head, actually, I want you to say the number of animals that you recognize on this sheet out loud to yourself. You don't have to shout it, but just say it out loud. You could, you could say two, or you could say 1,800, or you could say five. Just take a look and see how many of these animals you recognize. Okay, so I'm sure some of you recognize that there's a salmon, a steel, a salmon there, salmon or a trout. And I know some of you are gonna know the loon because you just had me stick it on my face. And there's a whole bunch of others. So keep that in mind of how many animals you recognize because I promise that by the end of this book, you're going to know a many, many, many more animals that live by the Fraser River ecosystem because that's what this book celebrates. It celebrates animals in the ecosystem of the river biome. And those of you who are in grade two and three will know what a biome is. It's like this group in this area that plants and animals live together. And so let's begin to read The Mighty River. Written by Gina Lena, illustrated by Kelly Wills. And before I get started, I just should put on my glasses, but I just don't know where they are. Let me just, hold on, I'm just gonna check. I'm not there. I, I just don't know where my glasses are. So I think um, I think I should just go ahead and read it. But if you, you well, some, something's wrong with your head, you're, you're pointing at your heads. If, if your head hurts, just scratch it. Maybe your teacher could help. Uh, teachers, your, your children are having problems with their head. So, so you need to help them. But, oh, oh, somebody is saying that I should do this. And then I can read the book. I can try it. Okay, that's good. Oh, oh, 
What the, what, oh, what is this? Oh, my glasses. What did you just tell me? Teachers, you, you don't have to go fix their heads. They're actually much smarter than me. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, I didn't actually know who I was singing for and um, reading for. <clears throat> the Mighty River, written by Gina, Lena, and illustrated by Kelly Wills. Can I pull you closer? How about I pull you closer? There we go. Is, is this is this too close? Are we all good now? Is this is this too close? Should, should I go back a little bit? Hmm. Okay, I'll go back a little bit. Okay, that was too close. Oh, oh, you only saw my mouth. Okay, then, then that's fine. How, how about is, is this better? How, how is, is this good? Am, am I the right distance? A, a little bit too far? Oh, okay. Some people are saying thumbs up. I think I'm going to sit right here. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. I want you to go to your chair. I want you to put one hand into the other hand. I want you to put it on your lap. And actually, before we begin, because I like doing this, I gave Ariane and Haley a big hug before we begin. I want you to put your hands together and I want you to just give yourself a big hug because I wanna say you are amazing for going to school and for learning and for homeschooling and for being so curious and full of wonder. And I know that you're gonna be learning a lot today. So give yourself a big hug to start off this day and let's begin. I'm so excited. Okay. I wanna say that there is a special introduction by a fellow named Mark Angelo. And if you don't know who Mark Angelo is, that's okay, you'll know now. Mark Angelo is the founder of World Rivers Day. Not Gina Lena Rivers Day, and not Doreen Rivers Day, and not Lyanne River Day, and not Miss Leavers River Day, and not Erin Joy Turkington River Day. It is World River Day for everybody to know. And that's happening this Sunday. And there's actually an event at the Fraser River Discovery Center in New Westminster. And I'll be singing there at one o'clock and at 11 o'clock and doing a book signing. So you're more than welcome to come. So Mark Angelo is a good friend of mine. And he says that he is very, very, very happy for this project. And he hopes all of you will learn and enjoy the river. And that way we can take care of it together. Here we go. How many animals can you spot? What do I see? What do I see? The mighty river, wild and free. Ahem. A frog, a moose, a stellar's jay, little flowers along the way. Can you spot them? A frog? A moose, a stellar's jay, little flowers along the way. And for those of you in grade two and three and four and five and six studying poetry, tell me at the end, what kind of quatrain, what kind of rhyming scheme does this book follow? Is it A, B, C, D, A, A, B, A, A, Z, Q, T, A, A, B, B, Okay, let's go on. A black crowned heron gliding by, a praying mantis saying hi. Can you see the praying mantis? It's really, really tricky to find. <laughs> okay, good. I think all of you have good eyesight. So, a red rough grouse high in the air, two bighorn sheep way over there. Where? There. Yeah, there you go. Two big horned sheep. Three pintail ducks paddling free. A small black bear just by the tree. Okay, I think you see that bear hiding over there and the three pintail ducks. What else do we see in our river biome? Two Atlantic cod and a Western caribou. A swallowtail butterfly flapping too. Have you ever seen a swallowtail? My goodness. Okay. A giant silk moth with colored wings, a prickly sculpin. 
Neat the waters rings. Can you say that with me? Sculpin. Sculpin. One more time. Sculpin. That is a fun fish to say. There we go. Prickly sculpin. There you go. He's going to come into your classroom. Ah, okay. What else do we have here? One lone gray wolf across the bay. Two western grebes out for the day. Say the mighty river. Crested cormorants perched in their nest. A river otter with a spotted chest. Can you count the spots on his chest? Those are a lot of spots. There we go. Those river otters are always so playful. Dandelions, daisies, and a bumblebee. A forest of tall green canopy. And there are the children swimming right in front of the forest. Two Canada geese soaring the sky, a jumping steelhead. My, oh my. Two Canada geese are going honk, 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 honk. <clears throat> Bracken ferns that look like tails a banana slug and glossy snails. And it's a little bit harder to find them in this picture because they're very small. Bracken ferns, a banana slug, and two glossy snails. Do you see them? Don't step on them. Don't step on them, please. Oh, phew. Oh, I thought you were going to step on them. Please don't. They're so helpful in their art river biome. A Pacific salmon swimming along and a common loon humming her song. A weaver spider in a silky house, dogwood flowers and a harvest mouse. Harvest mouse, the one that was running across over here. Two scoter birds with orange tipped beaks, a brown beaver, and three mountain peaks. And maybe in another lesson, your teacher can share with you the story behind the three sisters mountain peaks. It's a famous First Nations story and a legend and very exciting. And that will be for another book. What do I see? What do I see? The mighty river all around me. And just to yourself, I want you to say the names of all the animals that you can see. I'm going to say them too. Beaver, harvest mouse, our provincial bird, the Stellar's Jay, the loon, caribou, sculpt. Then, okay, the list can go on and on. There is the story called The Mighty River, written by Gina Lena and illustrated by Kelly Wills. And now I get to take off my glasses and I get to tell you a little bit about this story. Okay, so how many of you recognized one animal from that book? Okay, amazing. So you know your river system and the ecosystem really well. How about three? Okay, uh, what about five? Did you know five animals? You do? Okay. What about 10? My goodness. So you know a lot of the animals in our river ecosystem. And that is really exciting because the more animals you know, the more you're able to care for them. Now, before I tell you a little bit about the story and why I wrote it, I thought I'd sing a little song. Oh, oh. The song is in French and I don't think anybody knows how to speak French. So, oh, you do? Oh, there's some of you who are waving your hands. You do? And I don't know, I wonder, could you learn some of the French with me? I, I think you could actually, because it's, 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 not, it's not like a dictionary that I'm singing and you're very smart. So why don't we try it together? There are also actions, so. Can you slap your hands together and make a fish and swim around? Good, because the first animal we're going to see is a salmon fish. 
and it's called a saumon. Can you say saumon? Saumon, great. The next animal is going to be an heron. What do you think that is? An heron. It is, I heard some of you say it in my mind. I imagine that I heard some of you say it. It's a heron bird. Great. And the last one is, do you know what boat I'm rowing? If I go like this, can you guess? I rowed away in my canoe. Okay, so there's a canoe that you can row, and you can row slowly and calmly and just sing, la, 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 what a calm day. But if you want, you can also go like this. I'm going really fast, I'm going really fast, I'm going really fast. I'm going really fast. So either way, whoa, you're going really fast. Don't go away, come back here, okay. And then the chorus just goes like this and you can be the river. And if you want to splash the river, you can splash. But if you want to flow like the river, you can flow. Or if you want to go down the waterfall down, that's fine, okay? It goes like this. Let me see your fishies, let me see your fishies. Je vois un saumon, un saumon, un saumon. Je vois un saumon dans la rivière. I see a salmon in the river. Dans la rivière, dans la rivière, dans la rivière de la paix, the river of peace. Dans la rivière, dans la rivière, nous sommes tous connectés. We're all connected by the river of peace. And now that you are so great at this, I'm going to sing it faster. Get your flapping wings out, please. Get your flapping wings out. Je vois un héros. sweat from your forehead and wipe it on your class no 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 not your classmate your class pants your class pants wipe it on your class pants okay and then wipe it with the other hand and wipe it on your class not your classmate your class pants wipe it on your class pants okay and now we're almost time for questions but before i do that i'll tell you a little bit about why i wrote this book so i have been a homeschooler has anybody is anybody here a homeschooler a home learner Yay, okay, so I am a homeschooler and I've taught my kids for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is my eighth year teaching my kids. And so I've had so much fun learning with them in the forest, in the classroom, in the gym, in the car, in the grocery store, in the bathroom. Could I say bathroom? Um. If it's, uh, you don't have to remember that, okay? I, I doesn't, doesn't really happen. That's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, we can learn how to wash hands though in the bathroom. <clears throat> in the music room, in the art room, in the riverside, in the mountains. So we learn all sorts of places and especially in the kitchen. 
And I've also learned in the classroom and we've gone to classes as well with lots of friends. Like I see many of you like Miss Jansen, Miss Minato at Big House Division 11, Miss Dinsa, Hume School, McDonald, Stewart, Mrs. Spur. So we've been to many, many schools. We've been to classrooms like your classrooms as well. And we have lots of friends with our community. And I wrote this book because I wanted to remember some of those special moments we shared in the river when we were learning. And also I wanted to capture the amazing ecosystem of our river. Because the more we know about our ecosystem, the more excited we can get and the more we can learn to love and care for our environment. So I really wanted to make sure that all of the children saw themselves in community, having fun, playing games, and learning some of the names of our animals on this beautifully illustrated, in this beautifully illustrated book. And I was so excited that I didn't stop there, but I also made stickers. Now they're upside down. I also made stickers and I made an activity sheet for all of your teachers that matches with what you're learning now so that everybody could really take this into their homeschool, into their classroom and really enjoy it. And I just wanna share a little secret. It's not really out. Are you ready for my secret? I've got another book coming out this fall about the forest biome. I'm so excited and nobody has seen this, but here are the stickers. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. There's my favorite, Foxy, and also bunnies, with they've got matching coats this time. <laughs> I love bunnies, and I actually love all these little animals. And this book that's coming out has a lot of trees and a lot of the birds of our West Coast. So there you have a little bit about me, and I'd love to turn this time back to Haley and listen to some of your questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gina Lena. That was super fun and super interesting to hear your story and your songs as well. Thank you for sharing those with us. So just a reminder for those who would like to ask some questions, the best way to do that is to type that in the chat so that I can see it. Um, and then I can ask questions that way. So I'll keep a look, an eye on there. Just know that we won't get to every single question, but in the teacher's resource package, which I just put the link in there, there is a page where you can write a letter to Gina Lena. Um, and perhaps if you're very lucky, she will get back to you to answer your questions. Or we can just have her back if we have a whole bunch of extra questions. So Gina, I'm so glad that you um, had told us your story. And there's so many animals in your book that I have... Um, I've never heard of before and I have lived along the Fraser River like my entire life. Um, so I am wondering what is your favorite animal that either your favorite animal that's in your book or just in general? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to show you two posters because I actually do have a lot of animals that I really appreciate. But these are two of my favorite drawings in the book and they include a really fun animal. This one is a frog, a green frog. The name is actually green frog. So if you said, oh, that's a green frog and it was green, you could say, oh, that's a green, green frog. And that wouldn't be repetitive and it wouldn't be redundant. It would be the green, green frog. Okay, so I really like the green frog in here. And I really love, I wanna make sure that it's in here, okay. So I really love the, um, where is it? Okay, the loons were, the loons were a little bit further away. Oh, there's the loons. So the loons are really special to me. <clears throat> when I was in grade five, I did a project on the, uh, the Canadian loons. And so it was really, um, really meaningful, me, meaningful to me. And I also remember drawing it. And so the loons are really special there. Awesome. So and a few of the other questions are kind of, kind of, what motivated you to write this book? And I think you shared a little bit about that, but what made you want to write a book? Because you have been a singer and a songwriter for a long time, but this is your first book. So what motivated you to go from having your music, which is super fun, um, what made you uh, make the shift from doing just music to writing a book? 
Okay, great question. Before I just answer that question about what made me want to write books, I also want to just loop back because I asked a question to those who are in grade two, three, four, five, six, and whomever was interested studying poetry if they recognized the rhyming scheme of the book. And so I didn't answer the question yet. And I'll just read one stanza and have you try to listen for how it ends. <clears throat> I'll try this one. I love the word sculpin, so I'll use this page. A giant silk moth with colored wings. A prickly sculpin neat the water's rings. So if you've been listening, the first line ends on moth. So let's say the auth sound is represented by A. We'll just call that A. So this ends in A. The next line ends in wings. So let's say the ings sound ends in B. So now we have the ending in A, then the ending in B. So, so far it's A, B. Now the next, next line goes a prickly skull pin, in. In doesn't rhyme with off and in doesn't rhyme with ings. So let's call that a different letter, C. So, so far it's A, B, C. And the last line is neath the water's rings. And rings, does rings rhyme with off? No. Does rings rhyme with ings of wings? Yes, it does. It rhymes with the B line. And does rings rhyme with in of sculpin? No. So now we know that this ing sound is just like the wing sound, which we gave the symbol B. So we know this poetry, this quatrain it's called, has a rhyming scheme of A, B, C, B. And it kind of ties into um, how I started writing uh, books. I have uh, five music albums um, that I wrote when I started having my children. Um, and they range from, their first album is all about the forest and it's called the Forest Friends Nature Club. And then we go into, we studied community one year. So we called it Home is Family. Oh, sorry, we looked at, <clears throat> we looked at our home life and spent a lot of time at home and we called it Home is Family. And the third album, we looked at community life and we called that album, It Takes a Village. And the last album, because my kids are a little bit bigger, we're starting to think about concepts like courage and um, creativity and believing in yourself. We called, and also the value of every child. So we called this small but mighty. And as I was writing these books, I met a wonderful illustrator and her name is Kelly Wills. When she drew a picture, like I'm sure if sometimes I might read your letters or if I read your, if I see your picture, I might be moved deep in my heart, a special feeling of happiness or maybe a feeling of feeling grateful for who you are. Well, that feeling came to me when I saw Kelly's artwork and I thought to myself, I really love this song, Save the Mighty River that I wrote in honor of World Rivers Day. And I wanted to do something really meaningful that would celebrate my own family journey, homeschooling along the river, and also bringing out all the things that we learn in homeschooling and in school back to everybody else. So I thought, why not create a book with somebody who makes pictures that moves my heart about things that make me feel good and that bring back great memories to share with other people. So that's the main thing. But I, another last point of this, and kids, I'm not sure if, if you have this feeling too, but <clears throat> I feel like whenever I was walking by the river, I didn't know what I was seeing. I had a great time and I loved playing in the water and seeing all the nature around me, but I didn't know what things were called. And I thought that it was important for me living in Canada, living by the West Coast, by these rivers, to understand what these animals were called so that I could respect them more and know my roots more, where I come from. So that was really meaningful me, for me to do all that research to understand what are these animals called? What are these animals called? What do they look like? And I'm hoping that through these playful ways of hide and seek, you'll all learn these animals too. Awesome. So that I, that's a great, I, I apparently can't speak a sentence. 
<laughs> it just awed me into the loss of words. So that, that's a, a really neat story of how you came to write your music um, as you're going through life with your kids and how you wrote your story. It seems like all of all of the stuff that you've written has come out of out of your life and your experiences. And that's a really neat place to write from. So thank you for sharing that with us. We have a few more minutes left and I just wanna let our friends know that if you are getting close to your recess break or your lunch break, it is okay if you press pause and then come back because we have, um, it's gonna be recorded. And so if you're if you're getting antsy and your recess bell's ringing, don't worry, you won't miss the rest. Um, you can still watch the rest of it because I know there's a lot of questions and I wanna respect your time, but I also wanna ask Gina the questions. Gina, you know the questions. So if you do need to head out, I won't be offended, but do come back and watch the rest. Um, but so uh, one of the questions from um, Miss D's class is they're wondering what is your favorite river? We've talked about the Fraser River, but there's lots of other rivers. Um, what is your favorite river? Well, <clears throat> well, there are so many rivers all around the world. And I was just recently reading about the, uh, the gift of the Nile. Does anybody know where the Nile is? The Nile, okay, so Turkentin family knows where the Nile is. I'm gonna just say, because I know that you wanna answer, but is, the, is your answer Egypt? Were you thinking Egypt? You're correct, the answer is Egypt. And I was really excited about learning about this river because I found out that it gives us so many gifts. Did you know that the river gives us gifts? To answer your question first, and then to go on a little bit, the Nile is my current favorite river because of all these gifts that it gives us. But indeed, I grew up by, I am growing up by the Fraser River, so I really do love the Fraser River. And there's also lovely rivers from Taiwan and in China where I visited and where my parents are from. And so like the Yangtze River, and there's a lot of lakes, bodies of lakes and water, like the Sun Moon Lake is very famous in Taiwan. Um, but to be very short, uh, the Nile is what I'm enjoying now and also the Fraser River. But I want to awesome. tell you the gifts, some of the gifts that the Nile gives because it's so much fun. The Nile yeah, tell us really quickly because we're going to run out of time, but I do want to hear it. But tell us yeah. really quick. Food, transportation, trade, birds, fish, and a wonderful soil for plants to grow in. Awesome. So some of the questions that keep coming up are how can we get your music or how can we um, read your books? And so I just want to let everyone know that I put already the link to the resource package in the chat and there is a link to her website within that resource package where you can um, download her music or buy her books and her music. But for I wanted to also tell you that one of the really cool ways that you can read Gina's book after this event is on Simbi. So Simbi is a really cool reading platform where you can listen to other people read and you can also record your own voice narrating a book for other people around the world to read. And Gina has already gone in and narrated, I'm not sure where it's sit here, has narrated her book. So if you click on read along, you can find right here where it says Gina Lena, singer, songwriter, author. That's a really long name, Gina Lena, um, where she has recorded it. And it will also actually probably play, I think, the, um, the Save the Mighty River video, perhaps in front of it. Um, but so I recommend you go check that out because you can listen to it and then you can use your own voice and record it as well. So Simbi is really cool. And just letting you know that when you read on Simbi, your voice supports students around the world, which is super cool. Because if you say, hey, I want to, use, you can use my voice, I give you permission, and then they will use your story and your reading in the global library to help readers around the world like you. And then also they will take it off of the internet and use it in remote and refugee communities in India and in Uganda and part of the Simbi Foundation Bright Boxes. So. This um, event is sponsored by, promoted by, here by Simbi. And so, of course, I want to tell you about Simbi because it's super awesome and amazing. Um, but Gina, I'm just going to say one more thing because we have this read for good challenge thing happening where we have a challenge for the next 10 days to read a thousand books, to narrate 1,000 books. Now, a thousand books is a lot of books, um, but it's a lot of books for one person. But your whole class or your homeschool group or your family can join the Read for a Good Challenge and read one of those books. It's only been like 24 hours and there's already 48 books that have been read. 
So super cool. Um, I will put the link for that in the chat when um, Gina answers her next question as well. But there's prizes and cool things. There's a leaderboard. It's not there because this picture is from before. But you can win cool prizes and also get a certificate, which is in the reader in the resource package signed by Gina Lena if you read her book. So that is my shameless plug of what I think is one of the coolest reading platforms ever. So um, I recommend that you check that out because we need help to reach that thousand book goal or else me and my daughter and some other kids are going to be doing a whole lot of reading. But so you perhaps we can check that out. So um, Gina Lena, um, your book that is coming up, people want to know what it's called. I don't think you told us what it was called and when it will come out. Okay. It's called the what? Uh, it's called the Lively Forest, and it's, it's called the Lively Forest, and it's all about the forest and the birds that we see in the West Coast. And awesome. it will be out on November fifteenth. So pre-orders, uh, pre-orders on November fifteenth, I believe. It's already actually on my website. Um, the pre-orders, and then it's beautifulworldbooks.com is available for pre-orders, and Peppermint Toast Publishing is the publishing house that uh, works directly with wholesalers and so they'll have awesome. that as well. and sandhill book marketing and anyway. <laughs> yeah all, all those good all those good things and i'm so glad i'm so excited for your next book and this book and to get to know you more through this so um now my last question for you is will you come back again sometime and read your other book for us do i have to wear stickers on my head I don't know, friends. What do you think? Would she have? Should she come back again? I would love to come back. It is really a joy to be connecting with you in these ways, and especially because I can see that you're clever, you're smart, you're good rowers, you fly really well, you swim really well. It's very exciting. I'm very happy to come back anytime that you would invite me. Awesome. Well, I most certainly will be inviting you back once your next book is out. So maybe in the spring we can have you back and join us to learn about the forest. But I wanna encourage everyone to get out and find a river and go explore and read the book. Now, before we go, um, I'm gonna let you at the end, Gina, if you have one more thing to say to us, but before we go, I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek of something that no one knows about yet. And it's actually not even registrationable yet. We have an event coming up next Wednesday. I'm again in the wrong spot. Next Wednesday for Orange Shirt Day, where we have an author. Her name is Courtney DeFriend, and she also write, has written a book with um, Peppermint Toast Publishers, the same one as Gina Lena. And she is going to be reading us her book and talking about um, some of the Orange Shirt Day themes as well. So I'm really excited about that. So teachers and parents, keep your eyes open to your email, because my job for this afternoon is to get this registration all ready to go, because it's next week. So that is that. And I hope that everyone will join us. Now, do you have some last words for us, Miss Gina Lena, before we head out for the day? I want to say that you've been an amazing audience. Hello, I like to wave my hand because my hand is so excited to see you. And as I wave my hand, I want to say thank you to all the homeschoolers and all the classes for rowing and flying and swimming. And I really wish you all the best this week today and always and always and always and I hope to meet you one day in person to tell you that directly to your face. Awesome well thank you Gina Lena and I saw some people saying thank you in sign language so if you guys want to say thank you to Gina Lena or give her a great big wave and a thank you for coming I am so grateful that you guys are here with us and I hope to see you again at another event don't forget to go on to Simbi and read um, Gina Lena's book once more. So we will see you again sometime. Goodbye, and we wish you the best of days.